Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that you all are having a great start to your week. In this class everyone, we are looking at IELTS speaking part one, the first part of the speaking section and these questions will be focusing on uh, talking about your uh, writing. Of course, these materials, as usual, are brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there. For general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. We use these websites in our live classes. Uh, we use the books, the materials. These are basically the textbooks for these live classes. So if you're enjoying these live classes, I strongly recommend um, signing up for our premium IELTS package. The website looks like this. This is aehelp.com. We will use this today to speak with some of our viewers so that I can analyze uh, your band level, your score, as well as give you strategies and feedback. Um, to sign up for the premium package on this website, click this big red button that's just above my head there. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. We are an IDP affiliate, British Council partner, and an official IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent, so you are in great hands with us. Um, hi, Sarah. Good to see you in the class. Hi, Amra, uh, Korlos, Bibi, Gashemi. Nice to see many students joining in. Welcome to our members, Sunantha. Good to have all of you with me. Uh, for the general IELTS, um, it's this green background here. Uh, click this big red button to join our premium IELTS package. Again, it's a one-time payment uh, for lifetime access. And we still have this discount code going, so you can use the code PRACTICE. Um, nine uh, to get a 20% discount. Again, it's a one-time payment, lifetime access, so uh, you only pay once and then you have all the textbooks, all the audio, video uh, to uh, help you with these live classes on YouTube as well. Um, BB Band 9 is the um, highest score on the IELTS. So no, you can't get more than that. Okay. Roshni, I'm really glad that you're finding these live classes useful. Lamia, nice to see you in the class. Okay. Um, students, uh, let's get into it. So if um, you uh, are using your mobile phone, uh, definitely uh, check us out uh, in your app store, Academic IELTS Help. General IELTS help, those apps will link to the websites as well. Um, and you can follow us on uh, Instagram also, IELTS underscore A help and GLTS help. And if you still have questions, you can send me your questions um, right here, uh, adrian at aehelp.com. So, any questions, let me know. That's my name, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will gladly respond to your inquiries. Uh, this week, everyone, we've got lots of classes. In fact, today's class is kind of an extra class. We usually start the week on Thursday, but uh, we've had a couple of missed classes over the last uh, couple of weeks, so I've added in this extra class today, and we'll see how it goes. As well, of course, we're going into IELTS season. Uh, September is usually the busiest month for IELTS as uh, people around the world are preparing uh, for their IELTS exams for uh, higher studies and also for immigration. So we've got um, speaking part one right now. Uh, tomorrow um, we will have a task uh, to writing for everyone. Um, and then uh, we'll have task one, listening and more speaking throughout the week as well. So we've got lots and lots of uh, classes uh, for you. This should have been 
14 to 16.30. All right. Um, okay, students. Uh, so uh, let's get into it. We're always releasing new videos on the YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure to hit the notification button. Um, here's a video that we released, a speaking section video just recently. I just put it into the chat so you can see it there. Um, let's get into IELTS speaking part one. So um, IELTS uh, speaking part one has uh, about um, seven, eight questions, including the uh, introductory uh, questions as well. Okay. And these questions are all dealing um, with you, okay? So keep this in mind. This is my first tip of the day. It's an important one. It's one that a lot of students um, don't pay enough attention to, okay? So tip, um, part one of IELTS is about you personally, okay? So about you. Uh, therefore, you must use the uh, first person voice, which is I, me, my, myself. Okay. So I, me, my, myself, you should really focus on using these pronouns, okay? So practice using these pronouns. Uh, when you're practicing, you're speaking for the IELTS for speaking part one. Practice using these uh, pronouns for part one, especially. Okay, it also means um, do not use you okay it's a very common mistake where people start talking about the examiner instead of themselves so they'll say oh you should do this you should do that um, don't do that so if you find yourself saying you during the speaking section especially part one uh, stop yourself and correct yourself okay you're not talking about the examiner so talk about yourself Okay, students, uh, let's get into it a little bit, and I will talk more strategy as we move along. So IELTS uh, speaking part one, you go to your IELTS exam, make sure that you are studying or using, I shouldn't say studying, I should say using, make sure you're using English uh, for at least one hour before your speaking exam starts. So find a friend to talk to, um, talk to a teacher, talk to a family member who speaks English, but make sure that you're using English before your um, speaking exam. My recommendation is go to an exam center early, find other candidates who are there, uh, also uh, waiting to do their IELTS exam, and talk to them. That will help you build confidence as well by approaching them and asking them, hey, are you here for your IELTS exam? And they will say, yes, I am. How did you know? And you can say, well, you look as nervous as I do. Um, let's practice a little bit. What do you think? Uh, I have some questions with me. I would love to ask you a few of these questions. And then you can also ask me some questions we can correct each other, we can give each other advice if you'd like, up to you. Uh, but let's practice a little bit. And if they're like, ah, sorry, I'm so nervous, I just want to sit here and relax, then say, no problem. If you change your mind, let me know. I'm going to find someone else. Hopefully they'll talk to me, okay? So talk in English. All right, just like that, okay. Okay, so uh, let's get into it a little bit. Um, let's, uh, so let's start practicing these uh, introductory questions. Um, the um, registration for your speaking section happens 20 minutes before you sit with your examiner. 
So you go in, they take a picture of you, you show them your passport, they ask you to leave everything except uh, maybe a bottle of water and a pencil or a pen uh, in the uh, registration room. So no mobile phone, um, no smartwatch, etc. And then um, after about 20 minutes, uh, you get called or you go in to uh, sit and meet with your examiner face to face or via computer, same idea. And then uh, you begin and you will be met by an examiner kind of like me um, who will speak English in a very professional kind of way. And they will say, uh, welcome to the uh, speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. I will give you instructions for each of the three parts and I'm recording this for marking and clerical purposes. Uh, this is uh, candidate number uh, 88819732 and examiner number 589921. We are conducting this exam in Vancouver. The time right now is 10 in the morning. Let's begin. Um, what is your full name? Sometimes they ask you this question first. What is your full name? And then you just give them your full name. So maybe they will not ask you for your ID first. Maybe they will ask you for your full name first. You never know. Okay, so I'll give you your full name. So uh, my whole name is Alexander. Uh, David uh, McKinley um, please just call me Alex for short okay because Alex of course is short for Alexander now um, everyone this is speaking so make sure to uh, speak and repeat uh, so copy what I say uh, copy how I say it copy my fluency my intonation okay so here we go what is your full name my whole name is Alexander David McKinley please just call me Alex for short all right Uh, Lamia says, let's take a look at what some of our viewers are saying. This is Lamia, one of our members. Lamia says, my first name is Lamia and my family name is Babakir. Uh, please just call me by my given name, Lamia. Lamia, that works great. Beck says, My first name is Ozodbek and my surname is Mirziev. Please call me by my given name, Ozodbek. Sure, or Beck for short, maybe? Like your um, YouTube handle? Okay, that's okay as well. All right. Ardbind says, uh, my full name is Arbin Kushwaha. You can just call me as Arbin. Um, yeah, instead of the you can just call me, you can just call me is okay. I would say please just call me. It's more polite. It's showing that you're uh, being professional and polite, okay? And then a question that they always ask you after you give your name or before you give your name is may I see your identification. So especially if you're doing the face-to-face -face interview, they will ask you this question. They ask to show your passport again that you showed during registration. So you can say yes happily. Here is my passport that I had just used uh, during check-in. Uh, please Take a look. Okay. So again, repeat after me. May I see your identification? Yes, happily. 
Here's my passport that I had just used during check-in. Please take a look. All right. Um, so again, when you're doing repetition, repeat the question and repeat the answer. Okay. All right. Kyo's Sky says, yes, sure. Here's my passport that I registered with. Please take a look. Kyo's is good. Short, sweet, to the point. It's a full sentence. It's fluent. It works. Okay. You don't need to go overboard, but you should definitely be fluent. You shouldn't just be like, yeah, sure. Or pull it out of your pocket without saying anything and then just quietly hold it there. It's like, oh boy, this is going to be tough. Um, all right, Zhao Lin um, Tun says, uh, here's my passport that I have registered uh, with uh, for the IELTS exam. Please take a look. Registered with for the uh, IELTS exam. Uh, please uh, take a look. Yeah, sure, that works. Again, it doesn't have to be much longer than that, or it doesn't have to be longer than that at all. Uh, it just needs to be a nice full sentence. Uh, really focus on using good writing, students, even if you're just writing messages or um, responses like this in the chat, okay? All right, um, so uh, now, um, in the beginning, you really want to show that you prepared, that you are fluent, that you are confident, okay? Um, Sarah, if you're still here, um, the speaking interview practice that we just had before this live session, you did a really good job of showing confidence and fluency right from the beginning. So that was definitely the correct approach, okay? So this is just another tip, okay? Um, you don't want to work from um, a deficit. So you don't want to work from a negative position, right? So if you are shy at the beginning, if you're having difficulty speaking because you're nervous, it's like you're starting from a bad position, right? It's like uh, if you play golf, it's like you're starting golf with a handicap. So uh, we call that a handicap. So tip, um, this is another tip for you is make sure to be confident and fluent from the very start. You want to start band nine, okay? And to do that, be fluent, uh, show that you prepared, and that you are confident, okay? That's what you want to do. All right, let's keep going. Um, so common questions, very common question for the icebreaker. So kind of to get to know you, and make you feel a bit more comfortable. Uh, do you work or study? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this question. So do you work or study? Now, if you remember last week, I was teaching you, this is a, just a refresher from last week, is use correlative conjunctions. Okay, so so correlative conjunctions are those paired conjunctions remember like both and or not only but also or whether or, or either or or neither nor um janak currently i'm working at a bank janak what do you do at the bank are you a bank teller are you a bank manager what is your job at the bank okay give me a little bit more information be fluent okay Lemia says, I work, I am a medical laboratory scientist in hematology and uh, 
immune hematology in a National Guard hospital. I've been working there for 15 years. Good for you, Lamia. You must know a lot about blood by the sounds of it. Sarah says, I do both. I'm a first year student in Ax Marsal University. I study business management as well. I work as a part time receptionist in a real estate office to gain more experience uh, in my field. About my field is okay, Sarah. Uh, Beck says, currently I am studying in 10th grade at school, which is located near my home, and I will have graduated from my school next year. And I have been learning programming in the uh, Codial Academy. Beck, very good. Nice use of future perfect, Beck. The I will have graduated from my school next year. Really, you must be a smart cookie. You're graduating in grade 11? That's interesting. Okay. All right, so uh, I bo both work as a part-time teacher at an English school and I am studying psychology um, at college uh, because I'm interested to know the way uh, people think. Okay, sure, college. So uh, nice, fluent, full sentence answer students. That's what gets you the high band scores. You need to show lexical resource and grammatical range, okay? So do you work or study? I both work as a part-time teacher at an English school and I'm studying psychology at college because I'm interested to know the way people think. All right, um, why are you uh, taking this test? That's the next question. You can get asked this question. Sometimes examiners are curious why a student is taking the IELTS exam. Um, give me a nice full sentence um, with this. Um, so use the question, okay? When you have a question like this, here's another good tip. I'm gonna do this as an inline tip. So tip, use the question in your answer, okay? So what I mean is the reason I am sitting this IELTS exam. Now notice how I'm paraphrasing. So instead of taking, I'm using the word sitting. Um, instead of test, I'm being more specific and I'm actually saying IELTS exam, okay? Uh, that's what you want to do. You want to paraphrase by being uh, more specific whenever possible. And that will get you lexical resource marks and coherence marks because it makes sense. So why are you taking this test? The reason I am sitting this IELTS exam is to gain uh, entrance into an English uh, speaking uh, college to study uh, psychology. This school requires an overall band score of 6.5 or higher for admissions. Okay, uh, so I'm using uh, some numbers, right? 6.5 or higher. Uh, the reason I'm sitting this IELTS exam is to gain entrance into an English-speaking college to study psychology. This school requires an overall band score of 6.5 or higher for admissions. Um, Sumaya has this answer for us. Sumaya says, actually, I'm taking this test to improve my English skills uh, first. And the second reason is to get opportunity um, to work abroad. Okay, um, what would you like to do abroad? Right, so when you tell the examiner something like, I want to get an opportunity to work abroad, two questions come to mind for me as your examiner. One, where? and to what, right? So the examiner's mind here, okay, 
and you need to speak to the examiner's mind. Think of the examiner's mind, okay? Is where and what? So where and uh, what? So that's what you want to include in your answer to get that full mark. You want to satisfy the examiner's mind, okay? So when you're going especially for those high band scores, this is an important tip, everybody, okay? So here's my third big tip of the day. Uh, and this is for those band seven, eight, nine scores, okay? Whoop. So for band seven, eight, and nine, you really must be empathetic with the uh, examiner and satisfy their curiosity. Think about what the examiner would want to know regarding your answer and make sure to include this for your explanation. Does that make sense, students? So you don't want to include information that the examiner doesn't want to know, so don't go off topic, okay? Do not go off topic. Do not talk about unnecessary information. Okay, um, but think logically, right? Like, you know, what would that person want to know? Okay, does that make sense? Um, can I get some thumbs up if you understand what I'm talking about? So ag again, the best way to understand this is with examples. So like here with uh, Sumaya's uh, example, Sumaya says, actually, I'm taking this test to improve my English skills first. And second reason is to get an opportunity to work abroad. Okay, work abroad, where and what do you want to do? Those kind of come to my mind automatically, right? Sarah says yes, Baljeet Dillon says yes. So yeah, IELTS is not just an English test. You know, I have heard students say this to me and candidates say this, that Adrian, IELTS isn't just an English test, is it? It's like testing the way that I'm thinking, my critical thinking, my logical thinking. Definitely, for those really high band scores, especially band eight, band nine, IELTS is testing your thinking skills and your ability for empathy, your ability for logic. Uh, definitely, absolutely. Lots of thumbs up. Sanjay even threw a little cross finger in there, good. Yeah, so you have to be empathetic, right? So here's some I would say, um, I would love, to get a uh, job as an engineer in uh, New Zealand. Okay. Just that, just that one extra little sentence. That's the difference between a band seven, eight, nine. Okay, so actually I'm taking this test to improve my English skills first. And the second reason is to get the opportunity to work abroad, I would love to get a job as an engineer in New Zealand. Oh wow, okay, that's just, boom, there you go, that little extra, that little, it's like, um, you made a nice cake, and the cake looks great, and it, and it tastes delicious, it's a chocolate cake, so it's, it's a band six cake, but if you want a band nine cake, you have to put some chocolate bonbons on top of it, a couple of red cherries, and maybe even a candle, to make it special, right? So that's a band nine. So you need that extra little bit um, without too much, okay? So you're not going to put a slice of pizza or a hamburger on top of the cake because then uh, it's off topic and it's too much, okay? So um, yeah, not too much, okay? But just the right amount. All right, um, so you're moving along nicely, 
you're answering questions, you're feeling confident, you're talking in the first person, you're using I, me, my, and um, then um, the examiner says, okay, uh, let's talk about uh, writing. So it gets into the specific topic. They should introduce it. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just start asking, but they should. Okay. Uh, students, please uh, only ask your questions once in the chat. Okay. Otherwise, it gets kind of spammy and that's not good. Okay. So, um, just once. All right, um, here we go. So the examiner says, let's talk about uh, writing. How often do you write? Okay, this is a question of frequency. So think uh, always, usually, often, sometimes, rarely or seldom or never okay think about that when you're answering this type of question so how often do you write let's talk about writing how often do you write okay Pema Lama says I usually write most of the time for college and um, some of the time um, as a hobby Okay, Pema, we need to correct that a little bit so that it's clear. So this is what Pema writes. I usually write most at the time of college. Um, so I usually write most um, when I'm in college or during my college classes. And... Um, some of my free time and sometimes uh, when um, I have uh, leisure time or sometimes when I'm relaxing I like to write down my thoughts uh, in my diary every morning okay uh, so it has to be clear all right you have to have uh, clear accurate information with good grammar without awkward language okay Just fixing that up so you can see it. Diary is a book uh, that we um, that we write in, uh, that we write our thoughts in, that we write what happens in our lives in. Okay, so I usually write mostly during my college classes and sometimes when I'm taking it easy. I like to write down my thoughts in my diary every morning. I'm sure I will write about this IELTS exam tomorrow. after I wake up, okay? Uh, so that would be a band nine answer. Um, so that first variant was about a band five, now it's a band nine, okay? Baljeet says, I write always, uh, at least four times a week, as I'm fond of writing both uh, in my food journal and daily journal. As before coming here, I recorded my breakfast in a formal note. Uh, Baljeet, there's a f definitely a few grammatical mistakes there. Careful with that, okay? So um, you want to be a little bit um, more accurate with your grammar, okay? So I'm, I am, I write always at least four times four times a week as I am fond of, uh, instead of writing, you can say jotting down, OK? 
Okay, jotting down means taking notes or making notes. All right, when you hear new vocabulary, students, write it down or jot it down, okay? So jot down equals to write down quickly. Okay, jot down. So as I'm fond of jotting down both my, um, both in my food journal and uh, daily diary, okay, um, as before coming here, I have or I had recorded my uh, breakfast uh, in my food journal. Okay, it's a little bit, so be careful. Don't, don't try to give very strange answers or very unique answers. Like if you're writing a recipe book, that's great, but maybe save talking about your recipe book for another time. Um, if you use strange language or confusing language to talk about your recipe book, then, you're going to get a low band score. So um, Baljeet, and for everybody else who's trying to think of really unique answers, when you're at home practicing, that's fine, that's great. Yeah, definitely build your English practice. But here's another important tip for the IELTS exam. So sound original, okay? But don't try to sound really unique, okay? So, um, and I know that's tough to, assess or figure out what that is but you'll see by practice you'll see what I mean so tip on IELTS you do not need to tell the truth and you do not need to give very unique or complex answers as this can be difficult and lead to lower band scores Instead, sound original, be you, okay? But keep your answers simple and easy, okay? So does everybody know what I mean by that? So everybody clear on what I mean by avoiding overly complicated answers or information that gets you into difficult situations, even as a native speaker, okay? So uh, if a native speaker walks in for the IELTS exam, and that happens, native speakers also uh, sit the IELTS exam. So they should avoid complex, unique, truthful answers because those can be very confusing. So you don't need those, okay? All right. Keep that in mind, okay? So, um, you know, talking about writing down what happens to you in your diary is okay. Uh, Sanjay says I'm confused. So Sanjay, let me give you an answer for this first question, the uh, how often do you write? and then you'll see what I mean. So um, me personally, I write all the time. I write emails for business. Um, I write uh, information for the IELTS. I compose practice exams. But if I were to get this question, I wouldn't begin talking about all of those ideas necessarily. I would just say I am often uh, writing uh, information every day I would say for at least an hour or more uh, because I teach English I write a lot of emails and essays uh, just yesterday I wrote an essay about the environment okay I'm just making some of this up so it's slightly true it's slightly made up but I'm keeping it simple 
all right? So um, take a look at this as an example of what I mean. So it's not necessarily the truth. I didn't try to remember the complex contracts or different types of proposals that I was writing during the last few days, but I'm keeping it simple, right? So I am often writing information every day. I would say at least an hour or more because I teach English. I don't talk about teaching specific strategies for IELTS and so on. I just say teaching English. I write a lot of emails and essays. Just bef just yesterday, I wrote an essay about the environment for my class, okay? Does that make sense? So when you see this example, um, does that make sense, what I'm saying about original, but not necessarily complicated and super unique, okay? Hopefully it does, thumbs up. If that makes sense, if it doesn't make sense, let me know, ask a question, okay? All right, and you got to practice this. So when you practice this, it will come easily, okay? At first, it's not as easy as it sounds and you might get stuck thinking, but with practice, it will come, okay? All right, Pima says, yes, I got it. So easy and useful words that sound original. Yes, exactly. Okay, um, students, so let's practice this for real, uh, meaning with real audio, okay, with students. So uh, I'm going to um, open up the class for uh, volunteering, speaking volunteering, and to uh, speak with me. So you get a chance right now to speak with me and listen to your peers, your classmates, um, listen to their mistakes, listen to uh, their vocabulary, their grammar, and learn from each other. This is a very effective way to learn. Uh, we love doing this. Most uh, of our viewers love uh, doing this as well. So go to aehelp.com. That's our website. As I said at the start of the class, this is the website that we use for these live classes. So we go to aehelp.com. This is our support material for these live classes. So to join this website, click this big red button. Again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. So if you like watching these classes, I highly recommend spending a couple dollars and getting all of our textbooks, all of our practice exams, all of our videos. Again, we're an IDP uh, and British Council partner we're an IELTS test registration center. Uh, we work together with IELTS a lot to um, bring you the best materials possible. And so you can join there or you can uh, try it for free as well by clicking this green uh, try demo button. This um, student partner speaking does not cost money, okay? So you just need to create an account and then you log into your uh, My Student account. And in your My Student account, um, you will have lots of useful tools, as I said. So you will have computer-based practice exams. You have a full online interactive course. Um, you have uh, study plans, a workbook, printable PDF exams, lesson videos for all parts, uh, CDs. And right now, we're using this function here. It's the... Um, student partner speaking that's just right above my head there or right behind my head actually I can see that now in my feedback screen so yeah right behind my head um, so student partner speaking underneath student partner student partner speaking by the way is a speaking interview practice you can book a speaking session with me okay of course that's a paid service and in some countries, you even can register for your IELTS um, home-based exam. So IDP has a new version of IELTS where you can do the IELTS exam at home. And uh, some countries have it, some countries don't. If you see this red button on the website, it means your country has this, as long as you're not using a VPN. So be careful with that, okay? So, uh, but anyway, right now, uh, let's uh, go to uh, student partner speaking. Uh, accept the terms, 
course, it means that you're going to be polite and you are accepting responsibility for your speech. And then you see this interface, students. So once you logged in, once you click on a student partner speaking, you will see this and you see these blue envelopes you can send me a message. Um, you will see me as a master. So uh, send me a message like I want to volunteer or can I try or can I speak? And then um, I will take some volunteers today and uh, we'll practice some speaking part one, okay? All right. So let's uh, start this off. Um, let's start uh, with um, kind of the bottom here, Vilay Shuk. Let's try Vilay Shuk at the bottom here. We'll start with Vilay Shuk. So, are you ready? And I'm, I just select people randomly. So I select students who come back regularly. I select new students and just kind of randomly giving everybody a chance to um, practice a question or two um, and uh, give answers. Students, make sure you turn your speaker and your microphone on for the website. Enable um, your devices so that you can use it. Okay, Vilayshuk is ready. Hopefully Vilayshek picks up. Vilayshek, it sounds like you picked up on your end, but I cannot hear your voice. So check your settings. If you're using a mobile phone or if you're using VPN, satellite connection, data connection, um, you might need to, uh, you know, check if that's going to work um, so uh, look into that practice with somebody else see if you're able to connect and then uh, give me a call back okay all right uh, let's see if uh, Sanjay is available Sanjay are you ready Sanjay says can I be a volunteer this is my first time sure Sanjay I think this might be our member, Sanjay. Yeah, Sanjay says, let me try. Sure. Hello. Hi, Sanjay. Hello, sir. How are you? I am doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Sanjay, are you our member, Sanjay? Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> okay, because you have been a member of uh, YouTube for a while now, correct? Yeah, yeah, sir, yeah. And this is your first time volunteering. What uh, finally yes. What finally um, made you decide to volunteer? Yeah. <laughs> so you figured, you know, I've been watching these classes so long, it's time to volunteer, right? Yeah, it's time to volunteer. <laughs> All right. Well, good for you, okay? Um, it's building confidence, and I'm, I'm very happy that you decided to do that, Sanjay. All right, um, Sanjay, uh, may I ask, where are you calling from? I'm from India. And India is a very big country with a lot of different yeah. people and culture, okay. just like Europe. So can you tell me where uh, in yeah. India? Uh, I'm in the northern part of India, just uh, beside the Punjab in Haryana. In Haria, okay, got it. So, are you somewhat close to the Himalayan mountain range? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. Yeah, that is very close. Very close. Have you been to the Himalayas? Yes, many times. Oh, I'm so jealous. I would love to see the Himalayas. <laughs> um, yeah, that's so beautiful. <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, I've seen them in movies, of course, but never in real life, and that's definitely on my bucket list of what I'd love to do. And why are you doing the IELTS exam, Sanjay? Um, just because I want to pursue my masters in Canada, in Toronto. In what field? Mm, I, uh, like last, I think uh, last week. Uh, last week, I said about like I'm pursuing my psychology, so I will do in psychology. In psychology, okay, all right. Um, you're close to my heart. That's what my 
specialization is in psychology. Yeah, well. yeah, and I know that you are also done in psychology. That's right. All right, well, let me um, ask you some questions uh, for speaking part one. Are you ready? Yes, I'm waiting for. <laughs> okay, all right, here we go. Uh, let's talk about writing. How often do you write? Mm, every day I write my tasks about writing so I can improve my English skills and uh, it took about two hours and daily I use my pen and uh, pen uh, and paper sometimes I like to write on laptop as well what do you usually write well, most of the time, uh, I really like to uh, write about my subjects. Uh, just like nowadays, I'm pursuing my ba Bachelor of uh, Psychology. So I really like to make uh, psychology pro projects. So I have to write about that. And uh, many times, I like to write about my daily routines as well. What do you rarely write? Well, that is very tough question me for me please allow me a moment uh, 10 years back I was really interested in mathematics but nowadays it is totally changed with psychology so nowadays it is very rare for me I think once in a blue moon I write uh, I solve any mathematical queries okay good All right, um, not bad, not bad. Um, so Sanjay, that's about a band six to 6.5. Um, your fluency is very good, you're very fluent. Some of your grammar, um, some of your language use, your vocabulary choice, uh, those can all improve to get a higher band score, okay? And uh, be careful, stay with the question, okay? I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give you a bit of feedback here specifically. So I asked you, how often do you write? And you said, I really write my tasks about English tasks. It was kind of, it was a confusing, you, your word choice was a bit awkward. So um, really just keep your grammatical structure simple in the sense of subject verb object so don't jump around and put a lot of the repeating objects or subjects into your sentences it makes them confusing okay so simplify the sentence so um, I often write for my English assignments right um, and then you said it took about two hours daily so it takes uh, present simple when you're talking general right so not tooks um, but it takes maybe okay. I misheard the pronunciation maybe you said takes but it definitely sounded to me no, like you no, said no, tooks. I said, no I said tooks <laughs> yeah so it takes about two hours daily right general present tense now here's an interesting piece of advice Sanjay and this is for everybody okay in the IELTS exam you should always give the answer first and then the explanation because otherwise the examiner might think that you're starting to go off topic and they're not sure where you're going um, so instead of uh, saying it takes about two hours daily start with that because the question is how often so I would start with um, let me just write below here what would be the better version of your answer okay so I write about two hours daily um, for my English assignments so see what I did there Sanjay I literally took what you said I really write my tasks about English tasks it took about two hours daily and I took that I simplified it I made it correct and I started with the answer so I write about two hours daily for my English assignments and then you said I use a pen and a paper and I think you said sometimes a computer that's off topic because I'm not asking you about what you use to write yet 
right? So that's where the examiner might interrupt you. They're kind of give you a weird look maybe. So um, instead, uh, you want to just give a simple example and then go to the next question, right? So I um, just finished uh, an assignment on correlative conjunctions <laughs> um, yesterday evening. <clears throat> okay, does that make sense, Sanjay? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's great. Okay, so that's what you want to do when you practice. Record yourself, write down what you said, correct it, reorganize it, say it again, record it again, listen to it again. So um, let's do a little bit of repetition. I'm going to uh, say the correct version of your answer and then just repeat after me. Okay, so listen okay. first and then repeat. So I write about two hours daily for my English assignments. I just finished an assignment on correlative conjunctions yesterday evening. I write about two hours daily for my English assignments. I just finished an assignment on correlative conjunctions yesterday evening. Much better. Clean, clear, to the point, not off topic. Started with the answer. You're good to go. And now you're much better. So now you're in that band eight, even band nine category. Okay, Sanjay? Yes. Okay. Sanjay, right. I'm so happy that yes. you volunteered. Finally, I get to hear your voice. Yeah, I was <laughs> I was feeling like I have to try. <laughs> you have to. Once. Of course you have to, right? Um, I think uh, in the upcoming days, I will uh, like daily <laughs> try to give you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Volunteer lots, right? Um, yeah. That's great. Okay, Sanjay, so I hope to see you back. I hope to see you volunteering more. Thank you for being the first volunteer this week. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank okay. you. Bye, Sanjay. So that was uh, Sanjay, our um, uh, one of our longtime members, finally volunteering. Students, that's how you build confidence by doing this, by volunteering. Give a thumbs up for Sanjay, everybody. He finally built up the courage to drop me a line, and that was really good. Thank you, Lumia, for uh, giving a thumbs up. That was really great. Okay. All right. Um, Let's give Sarah a chance. Let's see if, Sarah's a very studious. She keeps coming back and volunteering. So let's see if Sarah's here. Um, sure, are you ready? All right, very quick response. Hello. Hi, Sarah, how are you? I'm great, how about you? I am doing pretty good. Um, I pulled my back a little bit the other day lifting a couch, but I feel better now. And I remember that you had um, a, a mishap uh, the other week uh, with your eye. Is that, are you getting better? Yes, I'm getting pretty better. All right, well, I'm happy to hear that. Um, okay, Sarah, so are you uh, ready to practice a little bit? Yes. Okay, then let's talk about writing. How often do you write? I usually write daily since I'm a student, so I have to be writing down my notes all the time in the online classes. As well, uh, I was just writing before this IELTS exam and practicing for my writing section. What do you usually write? I usually write about my online classes and session studies and I do write during my job. I work as a receptionist so I have to be writing some dates and emails all the time. What do you rarely write? I rarely write um, I rarely write my thoughts because I don't have time to write it. I usually think a lot but I really want to be having much time to write that down. Do you prefer to write by hand or on the computer? I do like to be to write by hand since I believe I'm much uh, I'm much 
fast writing by hand and it saved me time and I can be keeping the notes with me uh, because uh, like when I came to this IELTS exam I just had a, pa uh, a paper and a pen uh, having the tips of speaking. If you could write a book what would it be about? If I if I had the opportunity to write a book, it's gonna be about my life, since I do believe that world's less than the human, and I want my journey in this world to be written and read by someone. Okay, very good. Um, I'm just catching up to you a little bit. Yes. All right. Okay. <laughs> so um, <laughs> let me, it was really good answers. I liked your answers. Okay, Sarah. Uh, good, good. Um, so Sarah, you're improving. You're more confident. You're more fluent. Uh, words are coming to you faster. Uh, the more you volunteer, the more you're practicing. And I can tell that. And that's excellent. Okay. Thank um, you. That would be about a band uh, seven. So you have some good fluency, good pronunciation. Um, word choice uh, could be a bit better. Um, grammatical accuracy could be a bit better. My suggestion to you, Sarah, at your level, so if, for all of our viewers out there who feel like you're kind of close to uh, Sarah's level or Sarah's style of speaking and you want that little bit higher score, the seven, five, eight, eight point five. Um, a really good suggestion is just do lots of reading, uh, good novels, um, so English novels that you enjoy, um, you know, uh, read them, read them aloud, uh, jot down new words and uh, expand your vocabulary, um, increase your grammar accuracy. Let me show you what I mean by this, Sarah, and you're going to say like, oh, okay, I get it. Um, so um, first of all, uh, when I said how often do you write, you gave me a very nice smooth answer. So you said you often write uh, for your online classes um, as well. Uh, you do writing for practicing for the IELTS writing section. That was really good. And then I asked you what do you usually write? And then you said I usually write for my online classes. So you just kind of repeated what you had already told me, right? Yeah. In, instead of that, Sarah, what you want to do is just go into more detail. So what are your online classes? What are you studying online? Business management. Okay. So I write a lot of documents for my uh, business uh, management uh, courses. Um, I have to write uh, emails and proposals almost every day. So notice how I'm just making it up as if I'm in your shoes, I'm being empathetic to you. Um, just more detail about what those online classes are and what you might be writing for those online classes, okay? I get it. You get it? Okay, now let me jump to your last answer. So you said, because I, I really liked your last answer, I thought it was very clever, by the way. So you're doing a good job of uh, that tip that I gave everybody earlier, where you're being original without being too complicated. And that's what you want to do. So your thinking is correct. Now we just have to increase the level of English, okay? So you said, if I had the opportunity to write a book, I would write about my life. Um, what is a book that's about your life called? What's the accurate English word for that? Um, it starts with a B. And the, you know it. And you know this word. I think in French it might not be very different either. Yeah, so when you have a book that's about your life that's called your... There's a couple people in the chat there that are giving you the answer. They're like, this is the answer, Sarah. Biography. Yeah, it's your biography. biography. You, want, you want to write your biography, right? 
So that yeah. kind of word, right? That's immediately because because the examiner will immediately click. Their brain will go, "Oh, you mean like a biography, right?" And but they can't say yeah. that to you. So if I were if I were at a coffee shop sitting with you, Sarah, I would literally look at you and be like, "Oh, you mean like an autobiography?" And then you'd be like, "Yes, that's what I mean, right?" So yeah. if I had the opportunity to write a book, I would write about my life, um, and then you can double up. You can say my autobiography. Uh, because words last longer than uh, than humans, sure, than a human life uh, span would be a little bit clearer instead of saying than humans. Humans last a long time too because we keep reproducing, but you mean a single human lifespan. So because words yeah. last longer than a human lifespan and I want my journey in this world to be read by someone okay um i thought that was pretty cute someone um all right anyone somebody just read about my life uh be more specific um so who would you like um to read about your life uh maybe my family yeah maybe and um who who would be um so you could say by my family or by uh, you could say future generations. Yeah. Okay. Um, or if you really want the tricky word here. Um, so people who lived before us in our family, those are our ancestors. Uh, do you know who people are that will live ahead of us are called? No. They're called our successors. Okay. So ancestors and successors. Uh, will be the uh, children, your children's children, your great-grandchildren. Those will be your successors. Okay, um, here we go. A little bit of repetition. This is for everybody. So I'm going to read the upgraded version of your response and then um, just repeat after me once I'm done. Okay, Sarah? Yes. All right, so if I had the opportunity to write a novel, I would write about my life, my autobiography, because words last longer than a human lifespan. And I want my journey in this world to be read by future generations like my successors. If I had the opportunity to write a novel, I would write about my life, my autobiography, because words last longer than a human lifespan. And I want my journey in this world to be read by future generations like my successors. That's your band nine, okay? And you're like, oh, geez, really? <laughs> I need to do that? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, band nine, expert communicator, right? That's what an expert communicator yeah. is thought to be. You can do that, though. It's not impossible. It's just a lot of reading, a lot of practice, and you can approximate that, right? So don't forget, there's still a band eight in between, right? So, yeah. uh, Sarah, keep up the good practice. You're on the right track. Thank you. Okay, have a great day, and uh, I hope your eye gets better and better. Thank you. I hope your back gets better. <laughs> I hope so, too, with two kids, definitely. <laughs> okay, bye, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, that was Sarah. Very good. Very nice. All right, everybody, let's take another volunteer. Um, Sanantha, are you ready? There we go. We got more time, students. Good news. These classes are 90 minutes long, so um, yeah, we've got more time. Don't worry about it. Uh, just volunteer. Sanantha, if you're still here with us, give me a sign. Let me know. Hi, Sanantha. Hi. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? I am doing good also. Sanantha, can you remind me where you're calling from? I'm call I'm from Thailand. From Thailand, that's right. I know you've told me that a couple of times now. I just have to remember it. Um okay, Sanantha, um and how is your day in Thailand today or how was your day? I think it's very late for you right now. Yeah. It's very late for me. It's uh, 10 p.m. in my side. Um, my days, I went to the office and visit to the, some this 
uh, disabled people or for cases that uh, let's take activity and uh, that's event uh, ideally is to do something to help uh, other to uh, get something better okay so you were working today and uh, you were helping people with disabilities yes all right I went I went to visit uh, some disability mm -hmm. at their home for uh, for cases and I gave some uh, costly some uh, equipment to to them to help them to be uh, to get well-being okay very good Sananta that's um, very um, kind of you it's a very um, uh, uh, humane um, profession that you're doing so good for you um, you did home visitations home visitations to yeah, yeah. Home help visits. them use equipment to get better that's great okay well let's get into some um, task one questions here uh, here we go are you ready yes all right uh, do you prefer to write by hand or on the computer I prefer to write by hand because uh, I can write by hands of more of currency than uh, because I can create and write by hand is easy to write and quickly than uh, uh, typing on computer and I can take notes all the time that I want and I can write on my notebook everywhere if you could write a book what would it be about if I have opportunity to write book, I would like to write uh, my experience. Government, uh, I I want to buy some, yeah, experience government job to inspire a uh, new uh, new generation to, uh, to work in government organization. Have you ever written a letter or email in another language? Yes, I have written English email to uh, to professor in Japan. Uh, last month, I have to contact to professor in Tokyo. He required me to uh, to he require me about disability information and I have to decry and send a, um, more information about disability to the professor. Okay, good, very good, Sananta. All right. Um, so good, your overall band score would be about a five, I would say five to 5.5. You understand the questions clearly. You have good ideas to answer the questions. You have decent vocabulary. So your vocabulary is about um, six, I would say. Okay. Um, however, your coherence score is a five. So the clarity of what you're saying is a five and your grammar is about a five. But your coherence is not just five because of grammar. Your coherence is a five because your answers are um, sporadic. Sporadic means that you're jumping around. You're not staying with the same idea. Okay, it's very mm -hmm. important that you stay with the same idea. So this is a tip for everybody. I'm just going to jump back to the top here because it's a very common kind of mistake that many students make, Sanantha, what you're doing here. So I appreciate you showing this for everybody because again, this is a common mistake. So you must uh, stay with the same idea. Now, if you realize, of course, that you're giving a wrong answer, then yeah, change your idea you have to say oh I mean to say and then change your idea but otherwise if you're giving a good answer you have to stay with the same answer okay so you must stay mm -hmm. with the same answer when it is a correct answer 
and uh, you must uh, avoid uh, repetition. Okay. So when you were giving me your response, um, what happened, especially I believe with this first one here, uh, let me just find it. So I asked you, um, uh, do you write um, with a computer? Where is it? Uh, yeah, I said, do you prefer to write by hand or on a computer? It's the same question that I asked from Sarah as well. Um, and you said, I prefer to write by hand because, um, and then you stopped here. So this was kind of your first stop. And then it's like you went backwards and you started again. So I can write by hands more fluency um, because I can create. And then you stopped here again. And then you started again. Um, write by hands is easy to write quickly than by a computer. So it's like you repeated the same information three times in different ways. And if you do that, it's going to lower your score because strangely enough, it's actually more confusing than if you just say it once clearly. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So here, the correct version of what you wanted to say is I prefer, and I liked how you used the question, that was a good start. So I prefer to write uh, by hand because I can write uh, faster than uh, with a uh, computer typing. Okay. So interestingly, Sanantha, the first part here that you said, I prefer to write by hand because that was clear and accurate English. As soon as you repeated, I can write by hands more fluency. That was bad English. So I can write by hand more fluently. Okay. Uh, okay, and that happens when we start to repeat the same information again and again, we start to make more mistakes. So that's another reason to avoid repetition is so that we avoid repetition of more mistakes, right? So yeah. I prefer to write by hand because I can write faster than with a computer typing. Um, my typing speed is only uh, 20 words uh, per minute. Uh, but I can write at least uh, four times more um, by hand. Uh, this is the reason I chose to do the paper-based IELTS exam instead of the computer-based exam, which you should. If you're much better at writing by hand than by computer, then you should definitely do the paper-based exam. Okay, so that would be the correct version of that. All right, so watch that repetition of uh, information. Okay, all right, I'm going to repeat this, Sanantha, and then just copy after me. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so I, I will say it, listen carefully, and then once I'm done, then uh, copy, okay? So I prefer to write by hand because I can write faster than with a computer typing. My typing speed is only 20 words per minute, but I can write at least four times more by hand. Uh, this is the reason I chose to do the paper-based IELTS exam instead of the computer-based exam. Okay, go for it. Okay. I prefer to write by hand because I can write faster than with a computer typing. My typing speed is only 20 words per minute. But I can write at least four times more by hand. This is the reason I should to do the paper-based IELTS exam instead of computer-based exam. Much better. Okay, so you stuck with the same answer. You gave more explanation, more detail, and of course, you're getting a much better uh, band score in this case. Okay, Sanantha. So just be really careful about that kind of uh, repetition of information. Okay, really focus on not repeating. If you find yourself repeating, like, oh, I'm about to repeat myself, stop yourself, speak a little bit slower, and then think about more explanations and more details instead, okay? Okay. All right, Sanantha, keep Thank up the you. practice. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right, that was Sanantha. Um, give Sanantha a thumbs up. She's working so hard after a whole day of helping people. She's at home. Uh, improving her language skills so that she can help people even more. What an amazing individual. 
Um, let's give her a thumbs up. Good job. Okay, uh, let's take somebody else. Um, let's take, uh, I think Sansar has been uh, very patiently waiting here. So, uh, Sansar, are you ready? Let's see if Sansar is ready. Yes, very quick answer. Okay, Sansar. Hello, sir. Hi, Sansar. How are you? Sir, I'm actually, I am very fine. How about you? I am doing very well also. Uh, Sansar, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm from the capital of Nepal, Kathmandu. You're from Kathmandu, one of the, my favorite names for a city in Nepal, Kathmandu. Um, all right. Um, Sansar, where does uh, Kathmandu get its name from? I've always been curious. Like, uh, Actually, Kathmandu is a name from like uh, ancient uh, belief. You know, Actually, Kathmandu was a city of wood before, so they named it uh, Kathmandu, like Kath, which means uh, the wood in Nepali, so like they made it Kathmandu. Okay. Yeah, I did. I learned something interesting today. No. All right. I would have guessed like uh, an old king or a prince or something like that, but no. Okay. So the belief system yeah. of that makes sense. Excellent. Okay. Thank you for sharing that with us. That's really wonderful. Um, all right. Uh, so Sansar, let's uh, practice a little bit of part one. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I'm definitely always ready. <laughs> okay. That's a good way to be. <laughs> all right. Um, so here we go. Um, if you could write a book, what would it be about? Uh, as, uh, it's a very difficult question for me because I never thought about this. But if I get the opportunity to write something on a book, like that will definitely going to be about myself because I guess I do have a poor writing and I, my thoughts are not so very high level. And if I try to write some, about something strange, like that would be hard for me. So if I write about myself that's going to be very easy for me so i prefer writing about myself if i get the opportunity have you ever written a letter or email in another language oh well i have never written a email or a mail in any other language because i prefer only using an english language because uh, i don't even use the email frequently i only email to my colleagues teachers so they only consider the English language so I have never done this before okay um, before I analyze your responses I have a request from you I'm going to ask you this last question one more time okay and this time, instead of saying, I have never written an email or letter in another language, I want you to answer it in the positive. So I want you to answer it as, yes, I have, okay? Um, so I'm going to ask you one more time, but instead of giving me a no or a negative answer this time, give me a positive answer, okay? Even if you just make it up. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, have you ever written a letter or email in another language? Yes, once I tried uh, writing a mail to my class teacher in a Japanese language, but that was a horrible experience. Like the teacher didn't even understand. Uh, actually, she's from India, so it was hard for her to understand. She translated uh, all those uh, text returns in Google, and she find out a very awful results. So now I feel like I should never try to write in a foreign language. Okay, he put a smile on my face. <laughs> so, that was kind of positive, I guess. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it was kind of positive because you kind of ended in negative. <laughs> so <laughs> you said you tried, but then you should never <laughs> write in another language again. I really wanted like a positive, like yes, I have. I have written dozens of emails in uh, Hindi because I have. A teacher from India and I'm submitting my assignments okay but you kind of went negative there um, all right uh, your speaking is very good first of all so I think you have very good English okay I can tell that you have used a lot of English you have learned a lot of English I can tell that you use English in your daily life um, and uh, you would definitely get a band um, I would say band eight 
maybe on the low end a 7.5 but on the higher end i think you deserve a band 8 i think you can get as high as an 8.5 maybe even a 9 as long as you give really good content okay so my only advice to you is really with the content because your fluency is a 9 your pronunciation is i would say a 9 i mean i can understand every single word that you use your lexical resource so the vocabulary that you're using is lower because you're not giving me your full ability for vocabulary i don't think i think you're you're not fo focusing enough on being a bit more specific with your language um i asked you uh if you had the opportunity to write a book uh, what would you write about and um you did a you, you used a very good strategy here um, you said um, it's a very difficult question for me because I've never thought about this you know fair enough and that's a good place to start with that kind of an expression I mean it's not something a lot of people think about right what would I write a book about so um, and you were very fluent so I could tell that you know it's not some kind of a trick that you're trying to use but you're just honestly telling me that it, you know you need a little bit of extra time and then you got into it so you said but if I get the opportunity to write a book it would definitely be about myself um, because you wouldn't ha have the ability to write about some other kind of topic you don't have experience with it okay um, that's fine so this one you led into you started positive and then you kind of led it into a negative response as well um, and then you did the same with the next question so you kind of went the negative direction be really careful with negative answers so if you have a lot of negative answers it's very hard to score a band 9 because they tend to be uh, lower quality when it comes to vocabulary does that make sense yeah I okay. got you I got you. okay so you want to kind of go in the positive direction as much as possible so that you can show more vocabulary uh, more grammatical range okay so it's a very difficult question for me because I never um, because I have you use present perfect because I have never thought about this but if I get the opportunity to write a book it would definitely be about myself um, because I do not feel uh, confident writing about other subjects uh, so I would uh, write my biography in hopes of uh, sharing it with my uh, grandchildren uh, so they can remember their roots oh, and nice learn my wisdoms okay um, so see so you can kind of progress to more vocabulary more information okay uh, so here we go just um, I'm going to say this one more time and then repeat after me and this is for everybody so when I do this kind of repetition work everybody who I can't hear uh, right now should also be repeating so wait for me to finish once I'm done um, giving you the answer then just whenever you're ready repeat the answer okay okay sure Okay, here we go. So it's a very difficult question for me because I have never thought about this, but if I get the opportunity to write a book, it would definitely be about myself uh, because I do not feel confident writing about other subjects. So I would write my biography in hopes of sharing it with my grandchildren so they can remember their roots and learn my wisdoms. Okay, I'm trying. Uh, it's a very difficult question for me because I have never thought about this but if i get the opportunity to write a book it will definitely be about myself because i don't feel confident writing about other subjects so i will write my biography in hopes of sharing it with my grandchildren so they can remember their roots and learn my wisdoms okay good and slower you don't need to be that fast okay so that was just kind of fast reading just pace yourself slower your fluency is clearly a band nine so you don't have to prove your fluency to me it's better to slow yourself 10 percent and just give me better information okay sure i do have one question for mm -hmm. you like uh, is it good to take like certain pauses like if you ask me something very hard or that's very tough to me like can i take pauses yeah absolutely 
and it's a good idea so think before you speak right it's <clears throat> it's a very uh, old saying and it's very true so um, again your fluency is clear so when you have band 8 or band 9 level fluency or band 7 level fluency or 6 the examiner will know that even if you're taking a few pauses to think about your answers they're not going to take fluency marks for that for you thinking okay okay sir so yes all right Sansar keep up the good work and uh, have a good uh, rest of your day in Kathmandu yes, sir. thank you sir I hope I wish you the same sir thank you so much bye for now all right that was uh, Sansar give Sansar a thumbs up too um, students you're all lovely fantastic amazing people we've had uh, Sarah from uh, France we've had Sunantha from Thailand we've had uh, Sansar, we've had India chime in today as well from the north, from the Himalayan region. I love hearing your stories. I love interacting with you. So make sure to come back and volunteer. And students, this uh, part of our website, it's not just to talk to me. It's primarily, it's first of all, so that you can talk to each other. Um, here at the top, you have some IELTS speaking scripts questions. You have 15 of them and we will add more. So use these, talk to each other, use this service. It is free. And when you watch these live classes, uh, definitely register for our premium IELTS course. It doesn't cost a lot of money, especially when you compare it to the IELTS exam. We are world leaders when it comes to IELTS exam preparation. You might as well use all of our products, okay? Again, we're an IDP. British Council Partner, Test Registration Center, Certified Agents, and we're a group of psychologists, so we specialize in understanding how people think and learn. Uh, click that big red button above my head, do yourself a favor, get all of our exams, get all of our videos, and all of our materials that go with these live classes, okay? Uh, thank you so much, students. I will be back tomorrow with another live uh, IELTS uh, class. That one uh, will be uh, writing, I believe. Um, yes, it will be a writing task too that everybody will be able to join again. Okay, so uh, make sure to come back. That will be at the same time. Um, thank you members for your support. It was lovely having all of you here with me today. Uh, again, aehelp.com. That's what we were using for our speaking volunteering and that's our website for academic IELTS. For general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. It has the same speaking interface. Keep up the good work, everyone. I wish you all a fantastic rest of your day. If it's late in your country, get some rest, get some sleep. Much love to all of you, wherever you are. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada for now. See you tomorrow. Bye.